Professional journeys are rarely linear or smooth. Today, I am a marketing lecturer, but it didn't start that way. And when anxious students come to me, asking me whether they'll have a job for life, whether they'll find the right job, whether they may get unemployed at points or not, I always said to them, it's normal, don't worry, because professional journeys are rarely smooth or linear. You see, my own journey was not straightforward at all. I come from a generation where safety primed of a passion and a culture where ageism is rife, which means that past 40, if you are unemployed, then you're very unlikely to find another job. So today, I want to tell you the story of my own professional journey. I have learned a lot, a lot of different lessons along the way, which I can almost roll down to seven main strengths that I would like to share with you today. Number one, be true to yourself. Number two, stand for what you want. Number three, seize opportunities. Number four, adapt to new environments. Number five, find your passion. Number six, ask for support. And number seven, fight and persevere. Now, I am going to tell you that story and show you where these lessons fit. Most importantly, I want you to know that nothing, nothing is ever lost and that every single stepping stone on your journey will matter one way or the other, even if it doesn't feel like that at the time. My professional journey started with a push towards a study, a study, a program that I hadn't chosen at all and that I hated, legal studies. You see, I loved singing, I loved the English language, I loved French literature, so that really wasn't for me. So I resigned from the course that I had not chosen for myself. Now choice, your own voice, is extremely important because we all know that we are much better doing what we love and loving what we do. So my jump from the safety of legal studies to the unknown but my passion for English, for French literature, took me towards a brand new journey, a journey towards Ireland, where I was offered the opportunity to be a language assistant for one year at the Ursulines Convent in Cork. So here I was in front of a class and I was terrified. I was so apprehensive and scared. I remember vividly that day. I do. But when I turned around to talk to the students, suddenly everything felt right. Everything. I felt so calm within myself. I had found my passion. That was my job. I was a teacher. You see, I'm a first generation student, so I had no model to follow. And no one was a teacher before me in my family. So maybe that's the reason why it took me a little longer to figure out exactly where I fit it. Now, another opportunity came my way and pushed me yet to another direction. And this time totally unexpected once again. I had let all my lecturers know that I really wanted to work abroad, that I wanted to be a teacher abroad. So one of them came to me and said, I've got a friend in Scotland and she's looking for a teacher, a language assistant, but a slightly different role. You will learn how to lecture in another country. What an opportunity. So of course I felt apprehensive again, but I went for it. And obviously in those days, we didn't have the technological tools that we have today. So I applied, you know, through letters. And you know, you know what, what gave me that job? 
the legal studies course that I absolutely hated because they wanted somebody to teach legal French. I couldn't believe it. And yet, this is how I got that job and that brand new opportunity. So you see, nothing is ever lost. Everything matters. So there you go. I went there, but there was a catch and the catch was very low wages, no paid holidays, but I took that chance. And I'm glad I did because that then took me to my next journey. And this time, a proper job. That's it. I was a languages lecturer. And soon after I became the head of those languages, that language section. And I was so proud and so happy. That was it. My journey was finished, you know. I was there for life and I was going to teach languages for life. Uh, no. The journey took another dip. I had a baby. I came back from maternity leave. And languages were gone. Like this. You see, it was towards the end of the 90s and a lot of universities in the UK at the time were entirely rethinking their languages strategies. So I had no job. So what could I do? Well, I decided to find because I had a baby. So I had to find a solution. And I asked, what can I do? What else could I do? And there was an opportunity in marketing. Now, do you remember when I said to you that there was no paid holidays attached to that job in Scotland? Well, because I was actually lecturing some managers from the distilleries, whiskey distilleries in Scotland, I had ended up actually selling whiskey during the summer. And I did love that. I loved the sales experience. I loved the marketing. And I said to myself, well, yeah, that's something I've kind of experienced a little. I'll give it a try. So nothing is ever lost. And that, again, landed me in my new job. And that was that. I became a marketing lecturer. And that was great. And this time I said to myself, this is it. Job for life, pension sorted, that's it. No more trouble. Oh, yes. And this time it was something I didn't expect and I was certainly not prepared for. You know what? This time the full campus closed down. Now, of course, I was absolutely distraught. And when the ground falls from under your feet, what do you do? Then that's when you've got to ask for support. That's when you've got to turn to your family, to your friends, to your connections, to your colleagues, because they are going to help you. You've got to really hear them what they're telling you is good in you because you are at your lowest but there is help out there you are surrounded by people who are meaning well for you but also at this stage in my life you see i was no longer on my own i had another baby so i had really a family to look after so then i really had to prioritize what was it that i wanted and i had to relearn a lot of my craft. So in that case, you know, when it comes to this, decisions need to be really, really meaningful. And any opportunities need to be looked at, need to be considered, need to be seized if this is the right one. So I retrained, I relearned, I learned how to trust again. I heard my friends and my family. And I came up with two plans, plan A, teaching my passion, this is really what I wanted to do, and plan B, if it didn't work, then I was going to look after children because that's another passion of mine. I applied for new jobs. I refreshed my CV. I went to interviewing skills workshops. I took additional training. I gained additional qualifications and that was not easy because I felt totally disheartened. But what you've got to remember at that time is that you're not on your own. Other people around you are going through the same difficulties and you've got to care for your loved ones and you've got to help one another because at the end of the day, this is really what matters. And you know what? Not only did I get a better job, but also I joined an institution whose values I share. 
And that is now taking me in a brand new direction, sustainability. And I am so excited at grabbing that next opportunity. So you see the stepping, st the stepping stones on the journey. Yeah, some of them are warm, some of them are safe, but others are slippery or wobbly or they just disappear altogether. But your very own professional journey makes you resilient, makes you flexible, because along that journey, you learn what you want out of life. You learn what your priorities are. You find your passion. You also know what you don't want to do, what you won't stand for. You make, you know, those new directions for you as well. You seize those opportunities that matter to you. So you see, it's all about doing what you love and loving what you do. But for me, one of the most important lessons to remember here is that whatever you do along the journey, on those stepping stones, nothing, nothing ever is ever lost. And that is what is the most important.